Good evening, everybody. Hello. My name is Frankie Kington. I'm known as a wise entrepreneur. And my guest speaker today is Nicolay Armando. We're going to be speaking about Nicolay. He's turned out to be a very good friend of mine. He's going to tell us about what he actually does. And then we're going to actually talk about what we're going to actually do for the new year. So hello, Nicolay. How are you? And it's glad to have you on my channel, my YouTube channel this evening. How are you? Great. Uh, hi, frankly. Um, great, great, great to, thanks for having me today. It's, it's, it's a pleasure to be here and then kind of having a, a chat with you. I feel like it's been it's been a few weeks since since we last spoke as well. Uh, and you mentioned about the idea, so I'm, I'm happy to be in, the, in your YouTube channel and help you as well today. Yeah. Nicolay, I'm really glad to have you on. You seem very excited. Nicolay, just tell us a little bit about what you actually do. Yeah, so that people know what you actually do, please. Brilliant. Um, yeah, so I run a, a, a film production company called Title Productions. So our company specializes in two different niches. And uh, part of our business works with the corporate, with all the business. We do um, uh, creations of, uh, of advertising and uh, content, visual content that business can use. And, uh, and the social media platforms and their strategies and their follow-ups as well. So, but basically what we say is for business to business, well, business to move to the next level by helping them create digital assets that they can use over and over again. And the other side of that business um, is more focused in terms of documentary. We are always in the find out of meaningful, meaningful stories because we believe that uh, uh, you only can have uh, identity if you have a story because without a story you don't have identity because you only are able to know you are if you understand exactly where you come from and what builds you to the person that you are and this is what we're trying to uh, to really uh, capture and um, and showcase in, in our work so that is kind of a quick quick overview of what we do really. So Nicolai just gave you a great overview of what he does I mean I'm an entrepreneur and Nicolay knows I do mentoring and coaching. I'm a public speaker and my passion is really working with youth and developing youth for the 21st century or for the future to be leaders. Because I honestly feel, Nicolay, if we've got a future of leaders and thought leaders and entrepreneurs, we're going to have a better society for my generation, obviously for our children as well. So it's really important that people like me and you are going to be the role models for the next generation. So Nicola, yeah, I'm passionate about working with youth and I do exceptional workshops and webinars. And basically what I'm hoping to do, Nicola, is develop like a documentary around some great people who I know who've done a lot of sports in the past in Manchester and in Liverpool and in the Northwest in Thai boxing. Now they do a, Thai boxing is like an art and I'm like, a, I do a lot of spiritual meditation, which is like an art of living. And honestly believe that if our children on the streets of the UK, especially in the Northwest where we live in Manchester, if they have an art to live or an art of discipline, it's definitely going to help them in the long run for them to be sort of like leaders or entrepreneurs, because that's my speciality, my niche, is developing leaders. How do you feel about developing leaders? How do you feel that we can work together to get these youth to be leaders and to have an art of living with discipline. Yeah, I think I think I think yeah, I think is a is a big is a big scope is a is a big scope and it's definitely a, a gap a gap for that is a need uh, of that type of content because yeah most of the problems if you can if you can improve uh, the the youth you then can improve the next generation because if we have a generations of uh, of young people that are more inspired to to do go out there and do the good definitely we will have we'll have new uh, einsteins we'll have new uh, barack obamas you'll have new great people that uh, that will definitely going to make a, a a positive impact and i think that that, that starts from from the childhood uh, when we see people that grow up uh, and do wrong things, most of the times there is some type of trauma that they face in their childhood. I mean, we, we have the example of Hitler, we have the example of so many other people that have done bad things. And then they, again, is going back to the concept of knowing their story through their journey and through their story, something happened and uh, and uh, uh, and change the mindset. So 
that's why they don't they don't run things. So I think it's, it's important to focus on the, on the young generation because if you focus on the young generation, then naturally, uh, if you can have a better young generation, you have a, a better future. It's quite interesting what you're saying because I was I was looking. There was a documentary in a Netflix called. Um, it's a great documentary, so I recommend you watch. Uh, called uh, "Don't Fuck with Cats." And What's it called? Say that again. Uh, don't fuck with cats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a crazy documentary. I think the reason why I'm, I'm mentioning about the documentary is it's not necessarily about children's, but it's about how things can develop and really move from a small thing and then go to the next level and the next level and the next level. So it's, it, it almost feels like when you open the door, uh, for something that it might seem like uh, is not as bad, but is still wrong, then naturally you will have the confidence to do something that is slightly worse. And then it's about pushing, continue to pushing the limitations in the wrong way. Um, so I think I think most of the times you start pushing those limitations, and at a very young age, we we done um, we done a, a film called Addictions a couple of years ago that we work with the police with the police station. And, uh, and uh, it was, again, we, we interview people that been through different addictions. And of course, the target of the police, it was not necessarily just adulthood, but it was young children because they start, the first time that they start using drugs or the first time that they start using uh, a, a substance that is not necessarily good for, for, for their health, yeah. it was yeah. in the childhood. Because as soon as you get to those habits, then it's very difficult to, to get out of those habits. So it's, it's quite important to, to, to really mold uh, a good set of habits as they are quite young, because after that it's very difficult to change a mindset of a person. So definitely, I think, I think that is, is crucial, it's crucial to, to focus in the, in the youth and trying to do quite a lot of work with the youth. Um, in terms of sports, I think sports always been a great way to 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 want to change lives because uh, you got so many football players, you got uh, Michael Jordan, you got so many people in the sports that change their lives and and create and generate a level of opportunities that otherwise would never have because of sports. So I think sports is is a great way is a great way to do it. And if if we are able to to find meaningful stories and inspire generations, new young generations through sport. I think, I think, yeah, I think that is that is a, a great, a great scope in terms of how to do it. Is I mean, is all the, the, uh, there is always a lot of a challenge in producing something that you can say, okay, is good enough, and then we you can really use. So I think I think it's about defining one what you want, and then it's about building. A team of people that will help you to to build that journey. Mm. Of course, things done professionally comes with a cost, so um, there is no way around it. So it's about really understanding what type of organizations potentially you could partnership that them together could uh, could help to support that cause and, and contribute for the for that production in particular. And I think it is a good timing. A um, few weeks ago, few, actually a few months ago, we had the opportunity to, to, to do an interview with Will Champions from Coldplay. We we're doing a, a work for Volkswagen Allen Day in London. And uh, again, and it was they were talking about uh, they were talking about how how uh, the introduction of electric cars in the market again thinking about the the environment but one of the one of the secrets of uh, of Alan Day that I think is is fantastic in terms of the marketing strategy and in terms of the way they, they want to be seen as a, as a, as a pioneers and in, in the industry is that they associate themselves with 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 low with all the charities that are doing the good so I think there is that gap where potentially a lot of big established brands they want to be associated with the well good they don't just want to sell a product they want to make sure that the product that they sell it, it will contribute for a better planet and the and the better and a better world really that's absolutely fantastic thanks for sharing that Nicky man I really like the work that you're actually doing and the work that you do with you and the children and I think charity work is really really important Nicky me I'm actually working with a charity but 
for me, Nicolai, I like to do a lot of humanitarian work because I really feel like um, your heart's more in it and you know directly where the money's actually going. So I'm not knocking charities or anything like that. You know, sometimes it's about charity as well, isn't it? It's about working with these people. And really, um, when it's humanitarian, you can feel it's really coming from your heart. So you're really getting the money and getting it from your sources to give to um, countries, say, like in Africa, where I do a little charity there um, in Uganda. It's a Uganda Foundation project. And I built a really strong bond with him to help his children out there, get them books, get teaching, because obviously that's really, I feel, what people need. They need food in the stomachs, they need a roof over their head, and they need teaching, and they need some books, and a bit of sunlight as well, which always helps. So I like the way you talked about sports and youth working with sports. Me as well, I feel that's really passionate. I've got a lot of good friends, a friend of mine called James Gregory, who does Fathers Against Violence, and he does Can You Kick It? And it's all around sport. And I think that's really rich, Nicolay, to do that with sport. For me, Nicolay, I've got quite a lot of people who I work with, who we really trust, who are up in high positions, like in royalty. Um, they, work in, they work with royalty and they, um, they do arts as well, Royal Society of Arts. And we've got a few connections with the United Nations as well. But the way I look at it as well, Nicolay, with the mental health situation, what it is, I honestly feel like our youth as well, if they can express how they're feeling through arts and drawing pictures, because I honestly believe, Nicolay, the, um, the slave trade and the slavery and the mental slavery has had so much of an impact on the human race, even to this day because of modern day slavery. I honestly believe, Nicolay, approaching it from a different angle from sports and art can be really very, very valuable and very productive. Because I honestly believe when people suffer with mental health, art is a really good therapeutic way to express how they're feeling from the heart. So when you do like pictures of drawings and art, it can really express deeply how you're feeling on the inside. So I feel taking it from a different approach of doing youth and doing arts, maybe around mental slavery, how they're actually feeling about histories from the past, and as a human race, what have we learnt, you know, from slavery, what we're stuck in today, mental slavery, and the modern day slavery, what they're talking about. So I feel for me, it'd be great to approach it with sports. Maybe we could add a little bit of arts, you know, and the art of living and the art of discipline through spiritual meditation. It's so popular now on common spiritual meditation. And I think art is very therapeutic. You understand that, Nicolay? And for kids with mental health who are really suffering, we can sort of like teach and maybe mental and culture to go to arts as well and draw some amazing pictures. Because I know I'm connected with a couple of Facebook um, groups on Facebook and they do like black American arts. I don't know if you've seen it, Nicolay, but some of the arts are absolutely amazing and it really tells a person what's going on in his mind. And when they feel a little bit depressed, I might feel a little bit down or suffering mental health. Art is a really great way of expressing how they're actually feeling. And maybe if they want to sell some pictures, they can sell some pictures. I just want to get better at arts. They can draw and do pictures of arts. So at the moment, I'm actually working as well with a friend of mine called Ravinda, which has got an organisation. We've got an organisation called Cross Pollination, which is promoting arts, especially Black African American history, you know, of arts, which is really rich and really cultural. So we're really thinking of moving that forward, um, Nicolay. Hopefully maybe we can talk a little bit more about that, collaborate or do a documentary and see if we can get some great artists to really fund what we're doing and get the youth behind it as well with sports and get some great sports people lining. Like You've done like a Thai boxing and discipline like the art of martial arts, art of living, like I say, with spiritual meditation. Get these people together. And let's do a massive event. Let's really raise awareness to protect our youth that they can do sports, they can do arts, and be really creative and really positive to express how they're feeling deep on the inside in their lives. And to feel that will really help them grow, like we said, into these thought leaders and into these entrepreneurs and into you know successful people in society. So 
Do you know a lot about arts, Nicolay? Would you like that? Do you find that approach a little bit different? Or a little bit <laughs> different? Yeah, yeah. No, I think I think I think that there is quite a lot of a lot of different issues that you mentioned over there that um again they, they will be connected, but um but I think sometimes we need to kind of speak with them individual but not necessarily separately uh, because when we when we talk when we talk in terms of about history in terms of slavery and the black generations and uh, and how that has been affecting who we are now again he's going back to that principle of 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 history is understanding you you have generations now don't take me wrong i think in the last 50 years there will be it's been a change of that you start seeing more references but uh, but for for a big period of time and just talking in terms of uh, how slavery has, made, has impact the life of for example black a black uh, a black young man or a black young woman is you have uh, that sense of lack of uh, of representation more towards more towards don't don't be able to as a child don't be able to as a child or as a as a young as a young person don't be able to see them and the, as a, as a hero and I think like stories are, are crucial for the definition of that because when you're talking let's let's give you a small example if you're looking for the example of um, of uh, let's say our old youth and our or most of the television is being protecting when you're looking for the story of a narrative of the hero. If you actually look into details, most of the heroes now it's been changing recently, but before all the heroes, they're gonna be they're gonna be male and white, probably with blonde, blonde hair and blue eyes. And you mm -hmm. was, and then the, you have the, the creation of uh, of the the villain. And the villain most of the times is gonna be for a long time, it was someone that maybe it was dark or someone that it was a little bit different or belongs to kind of a different ethnicity. So you have that creation of reality that is being influencing generations after generations. And uh, plus when you attach that also with the uh, with the principle of slaverism that is is I think is something that is more deep in, into into our lives that actually if we understand. Uh, I was I was a couple of days ago I was I was watching um, an interview with uh, with a guy, sorry, I forgot, I forgot his name now. I will probably send you the link afterwards. But it was <laughs> one of the aspects that he was mentioned is how um, how the principle of slavery was, was in introduced. That uh, you have a big amount of slaves that most of them were black or mixed race, but then you have one black person that was the one that he was sometimes controlling that. He used to be kind of called the, the, good, the good slave. He's normally the one slave that has the opportunity to work in the house, the one slave that has the opportunities. So that some people sometimes, and some people might criticize me about that, but the truth is a lot of, there is a lot of black people, unfortunately, uh, that have that kind of in conscience have that belief. They believe that he's just just one, if one black person is successful, they said they already stole the opportunity. You cannot get the opportunity when it's wrong. You should be thinking in terms of how can you support that black person so you can find ways to create another opportunity. I think the market is is huge and there is no lack of uh, opportunities. I think there is lack of, of of clarity to really create a market that you can see more more black people, more uh, brown people, more people from different ethnicities succeeding. So I think it's just about understanding that it's not because one person got it, but they said there is no more opportunity for you or the opportunity only could be given a uh, one person. Actually, there is more than enough. But is, is something that is in conscience with the mind of a lot of black people. It's just, it's, it's just happened and people that say, oh, it never happened to me. Yeah, well, you might be the lucky one, but with a lot of other people, it does happen. They think that just because one person got it, they no natural will have the same level of opportunity. When, yeah, when they should realize that it's not about the opportunities, about you and what you're gonna do. And um, so that is just talking in terms of slavery and, uh, and how potentially you could you could develop documentary as well because I think is is an aspect that can really be researched and uh, and and developed in a, in a more detailed level. Really. Exactly, Nikki. Yeah, and it's because we all seem to be, especially you know our race of people, stuck in mental slavery. You know, and to know that we we created so much in the world, and we need to educate 
and sort of like expand people's knowledge and make them aware. They need to be more aware of what values we've created in society, right from the past, right up until now. Yeah. But I think sometimes as well, it's not the case of stereotyping us or putting in pigeonholes saying, oh, they're good at sports or they're good at music. We can be good at anything. We can be good at arts. We can be good at ballet dancing. We can be good at piano. We can do whatever we want. So sometimes I think our mindset has to be right. I have to feed that subconscious mind. But that's where I can come in as a thought leader to say if you have the right mindset, you can achieve anything you want. So if you put your mind to something and you want to be something, we can mentor, probably coach you, or give you the tools and the skills so that you can achieve whatever you want. So I think sometimes as well, Nicola, people need a little bit of personal and self-development. So we can teach that and we can teach that as well. So it's just about having the organisations as well. Like you say, the enterprise is out there to help and support our children or to help our children move in a positive direction. And yeah, you know, black race is so important in our black children, but everybody's so important. And honestly feel that we're all getting on and working together to one solution. And it's going to help everybody and everyone's going to become a winner. So Nicola, I'm really happy that I've been speaking to you today. I know we're going to do so much. We're going to create a lot of value. Look out for me and Nicola because we're going to be doing stuff in the new year. So I want Nicolay just, Nicolay, would you like to leave any hints or would you like to leave any information or if you can get older so people know who you are? Just take it away, my dear friend. No, thank you. Thank, thank you very much for having me. Of course, if you if you want to get a little bit in touch, um, you, you can see us pretty much every day, every single social media platform. You can find us at, at Title Productions. Um, and or you can find me on LinkedIn or in the different platforms as well. And yeah, definitely. Let's. I'm, I'm excited to to see what the new year is going to bring, and I'm quite excited to see as well how you're gonna you're gonna um, implement those desi- the ideas that you have. I do think it's it's quite important sometimes to speak one thing and then develop in that, and then gradually add other things. But yeah, I'm excited. I think the what you're trying to do is is great. It's very honourable, and uh, and yeah, we need more people trying to trying to, yeah, to impact the life of, of other people as well. I actually got a friend of mine that is, is doing some of the work. He's been involved in some films as well. Um, Daryl, I don't know if you heard about Daryl before. He was What's involved. Um, I need to check. But he's been involved in, he, he's been involved in the film called Seven Guns. And uh, that film was... Is that Daryl, Alcott, is it? Daryl, yeah, Daryl Walcott, yeah, that's the one. That's Darryl Walcott. The one. I know Daryl Walcott, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. he's involved, he's, in, he's quite, he's quite, he's trying to be very uh, identity as well in terms of supporting the youth. We, we had a quick interview with him before, previously, I think uh, towards the middle of last year. And, uh, and yeah, so I think if you didn't know, he, he would be a good person to be in touch because he had the same type of vision that you have. So I, pe- I believe that there might be opportunities to partnership over there and, uh, and fight for the same cause. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, I know that James Gregory as well. You know James Gregory for Fathers Against Violence? He's worked a lot with Daryl. So we know them guys, and the guys called Ramirez and a- Adrian Nelson. They're all great guys who work with James. So, yeah, we know them guys very well, um, Nicolay. So maybe we could touch base or do something with them. That would be great, Nicolay. Thanks for, thanks for mentioning that. So Nicolay said who he, am, who he is. You know who I am. Um, this is my YouTube channel. If you like the information, what you saw on our YouTube channel, please get in touch. Leave us a comment. Hit the notification bell. And I always look forward to hearing your feedback on what you thought about our YouTube. Yeah. I'm all over social media as well, like Nicolay. You know where to find me. I have my social media member site. It's called membby.com forward slash Frankie dash Kington. That's my social media member site, and it tells you all the information of all the skills, what I can do to help the youth. It's all on there. And like you say, yeah, I'm plastered all over social media. So I'd like to thank you again, Nicolay, for tuning into this YouTube. I do appreciate you and look forward to working with you in the new year. Take care and have a lovely evening. Thanks, Nicola.
Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Have a lovely evening. Take care. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye.